This is lesson 26, and I'll be touching on one more topic related to compound meter. Remember that the time signature is chosen by the composer and that you'll find it at the leftmost side of the staff to the right of the clef sign and other important decoding information. The time signature provides us with two very important bits of decoding information that will enable us to decode and realize the rhythms that we see on the page. The top number of the time signature tells us how many beats there will be in each measure, and the bottom number of the time signature tells us what kind of note value will be our beat or pulse note. Remember that one way we can categorize time signatures is by their beat pattern, or in other words, how many beats per measure they contain. Duple meters will contain two big beats per measure, triple meters will contain three big beats per measure, and quadruple meters will contain four beats per measure. Another way we can categorize time signatures is by their quality. Two of the most common qualities are simple and compound time. In simple meters, an undotted or basic note value is designated as the beat or pulse note. One defining feature of simple time signatures is that because the beat or pulse note is an undotted or basic note value, the beat naturally divides into two equal parts. Pieces or songs written in simple meter will have an even feel. If you feel as if you could walk, run, or march, the beat of a song or a piece, it's likely that it's written in simple meter. Some examples of songs written in simple meter include Joy to the World, Angels We Have Heard on a High, and Old MacDonald Had a Farm. In simple meters, guitars will need to play a straight strum pattern. And simple time signatures will always have either a two, a three, or a four as the top number of the time signature. In simple time, we can take the time signature at face value. So if the top number is a three, we can know there are gonna be three big beats per measure. And if the bottom number is a four, we can know that a quarter note will be our beat or pulse note. In compound meter, a dotted note value is designated as the big beat or pulse note. What defines compound time signatures is that because the big beat or pulse note is a dotted note value, that dotted note value naturally divides into three equal parts, which we often refer to as little beats. And these little beat values will always be an undotted or basic note value. Pieces written in compound meter will have an uneven feel to them. If you feel as if you would rock, swing, or even gallop to the beat or pulse of a song or piece, it is likely it is written in compound meter. Some examples of songs written in compound meter include What Child Is This, Silent Night, and Hickory Dickory Dock. In compound meters, guitarists will need to play a swung strum pattern, and compound time signatures will always have either a 6, a 9, or a 12 as the top number of the time signature. In compound time signatures, the top number of the time signature actually tells us how many little or subdivided beats there are in each measure. And the bottom number of the time signature tells us what our subdivided or little beat or pulse note will be. From there, we'll need to do some extra math to figure out what our dotted note value or big beat note value will be. I want to review the note value options we have discussed so far in both simple and compound time. So taking two four as an example of simple duple time, we learned that the top number of the time signature tells us there are gonna be two beats in each measure and the bottom number tells us that a quarter note will be the beat or pulse note. So one very simple measure in two four time consisting only of beat or pulse notes would look like this, right? two quarter note beats. We also learned that one defining aspect of simple meter, in addition to the top number of the time signature being a two, three, or four, is that the beat naturally divides into two equal parts. So we learned that these one beat notes, these quarter notes in this case, are called do. We learned that you can take that quarter note, you can break it into two equal parts by adding one flag, 
and that each of these notes will be worth just half of a beat. These are our eighth notes, of course. And then we learned that we can assign the syllables do day to represent those notes. And then we learned we can even divide those eighth notes down by breaking them into two equal parts and adding a flag. And then we can get sixteenth notes from that. And even though we have yet to read rhythms using these syllables, we learned that those syllables would be do ta data. So essentially we took our do day and we just threw a ta in between each one of them. We use these do ta data syllables to represent our notes that are worth just one fourth of a beat. We can create a two beat note by using a half note. This would just be do and we'd hold that syllable through. And we can even create longer notes than that if we want to use either dotted or in this case, since that's already two beats, we would have to tie over the bar line. And this would be a note that would be worth three beats. And we would again say do and hold that for longer. Okay, so looking at compound meter, let's take six eight as an example. Remember that in compound meter, the top number of the time signature will be a 6, a 9, or a 12. And also that in compound meter, our big beat is a dotted note value that naturally subdivides into three equal parts. Our time signature in compound meter represents our little beat. So in this case, it tells us that we will have six little beats per measure and that our eighth note will be our little beat or pulse note. So I'm going to go ahead and draw, since this is actually my subdivided beat, six eighth notes down here. And you'll notice these are not dotted eighth notes. These are a basic note value. They're an undotted note value because our dotted note value, that's our big beat, breaks down into three equal parts and these will always be undotted note values. So once we know that our six eighth notes represent one measure's worth of subdivided or little beats, we can know that a dotted quarter note is going to be our big beat or pulse note in six eight time, and we're in compound duple meter because of that. There are two big beats in each measure. Okay, so we know that these dotted quarter note beats will be our dues because they represent one big beat. And we also learned that Gordon uses the syllables do, da, di to talk about notes that are worth just one third of a beat each. We've also learned that in compound meter, a two beat note would be a dotted half note. And we would use the syllable do held for two beats to represent that note. We could also create a three beat note by using a dotted half note, hitting a bar line, and then tying it to a dotted quarter note. And we would say do again and hold it for three counts. What about this level of subdivision? We have not yet covered that in Gordon rhythm syllables. So I wanted to at least introduce the concept just so you understand, theoretically at least, how we would break this down. So note that our subdivided or little beat in any compound meter is an undotted note value. So undotted or basic note values naturally divide into two equal parts. So that's exactly what we will do here. We can take every one third beat note, every eighth note, and we can break it into two equal parts. What is one eighth note broken into two equal parts? A sixteenth note. So we can take six sixteenth notes, that's equivalent to three eighth notes. We can beam them together using two beams. And we've now broken down these notes into one-sixth of a beat each. 
And the syllables we use are pretty ingenious in Gordon's language. We keep our do, da, di, do, da, di, and notice these line up just like they were with our eighth note beats. And then, just like we threw in these ta's in between our do day, we do the same thing here. So, do ta, da, ta, di, ta. Do ta, da, ta, di, ta. And of course, we can get all sorts of different permutations and combinations of how these rhythms are thrown together. So, I'm just going to throw these out there as common patterns you'll, you'll see. You'll see a composer will take one eighth note, split the middle da into two parts, and then keep the last one. This sounds do, da, ta, di. Sometimes they take those three eighth notes, and then they take the last one, and they break it into two equal parts. And this would be spoken as do, da, di, ta. Sometimes they take that first eighth note and they break it into two equal parts. This would be spoken as do ta da di. Sometimes they'll keep the first eighth note by itself and split the last two into two equal parts each. This is a very common pattern as well. And it would sound like this, do da ta di ta. I'll give you one other very common pattern it looks complicated to read, but once you've tried decoding it several times in a row, you start to kind of feel the swing of it, and it's not so difficult. But you have a dotted eighth note, a sixteenth note, and then another eighth note. So take, take a second here to figure out the math, okay? That dotted eighth note is worth two sixteenths, and its dot is worth another sixteenth, because the dot is always worth half of whichever note is dotting. This is worth your next 16th, because this is what we do when we have an orphan 16th note. Inside a figure like this that's beamed, you just see the one little flag sticking out. And then you have two 16th notes that account for this last 8th note, okay? So this is what it would look like. I'll write in the syllables so you can kind of see what that would look like. Do, ta, da, ta, di, ta, okay? And then I would speak this one loudly and hold it through. Do, ta, and then the D would be held through. So, do, ta, 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 D. I'll do that again. Do, ta, D. And if I do it smoothly, do, ta, D. Do, ta, di. Do, ta, di. Do, ta, di. When you go quickly, it's do, ta, di, do, ta, di, do, ta, di, do, ta, di. Has that skippy kind of a sound. And you've probably heard and actually probably even sung and played this rhythm a lot without even realizing how you would decode it. But that's how we would play it and decode it very accurately. So we may or may not get to the point of reading some of these rhythms together, but I at least want you to be exposed to this so you understand the concept and understand how we break compound time down once we get below the level of this basic subdivided beat. We actually just usually at least break it down into two equal parts, just like we do in simple time.